Hey Facebook, welcome to Brookfield Zoo's Bringing the Zoo to You. My name is Jill and with me I have Olivia and we are animal care specialists here at Hamill Family Wild Encounters. Today we're in our parakeet aviary where we're learning about some really cool birds. Parakeets are also known as budragars and they're a small member of the parrot family. And you may be familiar with them from your visits here to the zoo where you get to get up close and personal with them by feeding them on seed sticks. So today we're gonna go a little behind the scenes and show you how we take care of our flock of over 500 birds. It takes a lot of work um, and we do have to look very closely at the flock um, as a group and as individuals to make sure that they're all healthy. So right here we actually have our incubator um, where we house birds that are sick or not feeling well or very low in weight. So right now it's empty because we don't have any um, cases that require us to separate the birds, which is a good thing. Um, but this allows them to be housed um, in a way that we can see them very closely. They're very close to a food source um, and we can administer medication if necessary. Um, we also have um, two parakeets that we separated from the flock and we're going to show you how we distinguish between males and females and also how we do beak and nail trims and do a quick little exam to make sure the birds are healthy. So Olivia's going to take our first bird that we have here and you can see her hands actually have tape on them to protect her because they're small but their beaks are very sharp and very strong um, and they can actually do a lot of damage to your hands if you're not careful. So there's a special way we hold the birds to be able to um, have control over them, um, hold them tight, but not too tight, obviously. Um, so you can see this bird here is actually a female. And we can tell by looking at what's called the sear. So this part uh, right above the beak. Um, so in females, they tend to be um, like a brownish color. This one um, has this little bit of like, buildup to it. Um, and this means that this is a mature female. Um, so some other things I wanted to point out on this parakeet are um, its leg band here. So every single one of our birds has a leg band that has a number um, and it says CZS for the Chicago Zoological Society and it's got some other information on there that serves as an identifier. So like I said each bird has its own number and that allows us to keep track of its medical history, um, if it's gotten treatment or if it's been used for breeding before. Um, so we actually keep really extensive history on these parakeets, um, believe it or not, even though there's so many of them, um, we have to be very careful to keep track of everything. Um, so Olivia's going to start doing a beak and nail trim. So we do um, routine trims on these birds. We catch up birds every single day and um, she'll trim her, her, her beak and she'll look at her feet and trim her nails. And now she's looking to make sure there's, there's, there's no injuries. Um, that everything looks healthy and she'll just do a little quick trim. Now you have to be careful when trimming bird nails because they do have what's called a quick or a blood source. Um, so they could bleed if we go too short. But otherwise this doesn't hurt the bird. Um, and the same with the beak, it doesn't hurt to get trimmed um, as long as we are careful not to trim too short. Um, and these are important because it makes sure that the bird um, can eat well, can groom itself well. So then we also um, look at the bird's wings. This bird looks good. Um, and feel its keel. Um, so we're trying to feel its body condition to see um, if this bird is at a healthy weight. Um, and it looks good. So we're actually also going to weigh this bird as one final check. So even if the bird feels like it's at a good body condition, um, we're gonna check its weight. And we have certain benchmarks that we look for so that you know, this bird is at a perfect weight. Um, it looks bright and alert and healthy, so we have no concerns and we can release this bird. So usually in a flock that's so big, um, the birds that aren't feeling well will point themselves out to us. So either they're not feeling well or um, they're not flying well. Um, maybe they're not eating when the other birds are eating. Um, or they have some other obvious injury that we could just pick out very easily. So part of um, our normal day is just walking through the aviary, looking at as many birds as we can just to get an eye on any abnormalities we might see. So now this bird is a male, and you can tell it's very obviously blue, whereas the other one was that brownish color. Um, so they, when a parakeet is born, um, you really can't tell its gender until 
it's at least a year of age. So when we hatch birds here, we'll wait um, until they're about a year old, and then we'll um, you know catch up the ones when we see them and record their sex. So we're doing another beacon nail trim on this bird too. And you can see this bird also has a band on its leg. And both of these birds have black bands, but in our flock we have different colors that um, denote to us the different ages of the birds in the flock. Do the males and females um, have bands on the same leg? Yes, we band them all on the right leg unless um, there's some injury or something that prevents us from doing that. We might band the other leg. And how many of the parakeets here were born at Brookfield Zoo, hatched at Brookfield Zoo? Um, exact numbers I don't know off the top of my head, but we have been open since 2015, and our original flock um, has somewhere around five or 600 birds, and we've been breeding every year since. And it varies between um, 50 to 100 chicks that we get with each, which, with each round of breeding that we do. Um, so you saw an example of a male and a female, and right here we also have uh, one of the nest boxes that we would use to breed our birds here. Um, so it's just like a square box that would hang on the mesh of the enclosure. And then if we look inside, uh, there's actually this divot in the middle, which is really important because it helps to keep the eggs in a way that the female can incubate them. Um, but it would also kind of deter the chicks from having um, issues like splayed legs or other things like that. So one of the most common questions we get is, um, do the birds mate on exhibit? And the answer is no, because we don't provide them with the right materials for them to nest out there. Um, and the reason for that is if we had chicks that were fledging and couldn't really fly very well, it would be difficult for us to keep them off the ground so that they wouldn't get hurt. Because if you've ever been at the in the aviary on a really busy weekend in the summer, you know it gets pretty crowded in there, so you have to keep all the bird safety in mind. So we actually are functioning right now almost as if nothing changed. So every day we clean out there, we feed the birds on a normal schedule like we would. We feed them every hour, um, and that's to make sure that um, the birds aren't out competing with each other and everyone's getting enough food. Um, the only difference is that we don't feed them off seed sticks all the time. We actually um, feed them on big tables. Um, but their diet is adjusted so that they're getting enough food even though they're not getting fed on the seed sticks. So how many birds are um, out there at one time? Um, it varies. Right now our flock is just about above 500 and we probably have around 450 out there right now. Oh, wow. So every morning we actually would shift the birds back into holding um, and it's one of the behaviors that we um, kind of keep trained with them. Um, they don't all always shift in, um, but we usually get most of them. And then every year in February, we do an annual shutdown where we catch every single bird and we process them, meaning we do beak and nail trims on every single bird um, to make sure everyone's healthy and there's no medical issues. Um, and we just finished our shutdown for this year and um, all the birds are looking pretty good. So we're pretty happy with how it went. How many birds would you catch up on a normal day mm -hmm. to, to do a check on? Every day we catch at least 10 birds. Um, and um, we try to do it in a way so that we know we're not catching the same 10 birds. Um, and we, we get a pretty good sample of the flock that way. So then when we do those trims, any birds that are low weight or have medical concerns are held back and separated. So either in the incubator or in a separate area. And they get looked at by vet care staff once a week. So then um, sometimes we administer medications or um, sometimes we treat the flock with preventative medications um, to make sure that we're all healthy and everything is good. Are parakeets good pets? They are. They're excellent pets. Um, they typically live between 5 and 10 years, but sometimes they could live up to 20 if you give them proper care. But they make really good companions, especially because they're um, a good size. They're not too big. and. They don't live as long as some other parrots can that can live up to 80 years or more. Um, so they make excellent pets. And they come in all different colors, right? Correct, yeah. So um, the natural color that parakeets would come in in the wild is a uh, yellow and green. But um, they're actually used for shows. Um, people breed them to show parakeets. And um, if you look at our flock, you can see a whole rainbow of colors that range from grays and blues to almost purples, um, all kinds of different colors. Uh, which one is your favorite parakeet? 
Um, I really like the kind that are like bluish grayish in color. Those are my favorite, but. What about you, Olivia? I like the ones that are light blue and gray, so pretty similar, but the gray ones are pretty unique. They're not as common as the other ones that we have. Once in a while, there's um, we can actually pick out like a single bird that would like fly down while we're feeding and land on the bowl. That's like a really, just, I, I can think of like two birds that's ever happened with, um, <laughs> that we always like kind of make a mental note of, but it's kind of rare. <laughs> so how big is the space back here? Um, how many different um, habitats are there back here for the birds? Yeah, so you can see we're actually standing in one right now, and this is the biggest one that we have. But we have five different divided stalls, um, and they can all connect to each other via shift doors that we have. Um, and then you can see these doors over here will lead out to the exhibit. So when we shift the birds in in the mornings, they all come in through this door and we ring a bell that gives them um, the signal to shift in. And then um, we have the incubator, and then we also have another separate side cage that we use rarely, but sometimes there's birds that need um, cage rest, but wouldn't do well in such a big enclosure. Um, so we might move them to like a different area just for a short time. Uh, how many eggs would a parakeet lay at once? They typically lay between um, like maybe six to ten eggs, but we've had some lay as many as twelve. Um, it just varies a lot based on the bird or its history. Um, so we make sure to provide them with enough supplements, calcium supplements, to make sure that they're healthy while they're laying eggs. Um, so I think that's about it for now. So we wanted to thank you for watching and thank you for your support of Rookville Zoo. Uh, we hope to see you back when the aviary opens up to the public. And uh, thanks for watching.